This video is now in session, and a lot of individuals don't like Joe Manchin. They don't like Joe Manchin because he is blocking a lot of the things that Democrats are proposing in their infrastructure, or rather in their budget plan, their $1.75 trillion budget framework. But even if you don't like Joe Manchin, a lot of what he is saying is correct, which is that the Democrats are focusing on things that Americans at this current state at this current state don't really care about. Because right now, what we're seeing is that the Democrats are trying to um, focus on issues that pertain to the 2020 election, things like democracy and things like uh, th and things like. Um, th things like universal health care, as well as uh, universal pre-K, and a lot of these things do help Americans, but for a lot of them, they are focused on the economy right now. They are focused on certain cultural, cultural issues, like how our curriculum is being taught in uh, K through 12. So in this video, what we're going to go through is what Americans really care about. Um, and this is based on a sample polling that I have done, uh, the a sample polling that I have done uh, for the past few weeks. And in this video, I'm going to explain some of them. So the first thing we have is uh, taxes. Taxes are something that a lot of Americans have cared about for a very long time. Um, and it has uh, kind of galvanized a lot of elections. But in this specific in this specific time period, what we're seeing is that a lot of individuals don't really want new taxes. They don't want taxes. Um, they don't want to pay new taxes, and that's kind of understandable. It's always been a sentiment that's been echoed in American society. But at this current moment, they feel like that taxes uh, that the current tax levels are actually a little bit too high, especially those in more, I guess, democratic states like New Jersey, where we saw uh, a repudiation of uh, the uh, of New Jersey's property taxes. And in other states, what we're likely to see is a repudiation in taxes. So this relates to state and local taxes, or SALT. Um, <clears throat> In California, uh, we're going to have to look at that election because it will be important when it relates to taxes, since taxes are uh, since California has one of the highest taxes in the, in the nation, uh, so as uh, New York, and as well as a slew of other Democratic states. And why is that important? There's a lot of safe Democratic seats in these states, but there are also a lot of competitive Democratic seats, especially in California, like Josh Harder's seat in the San Francisco metropolitan area, uh, in uh, Yun Kim seat in uh in the Orange County region, just like uh, Michelle Steele seat in uh, the Orange County region. So it's an, it's an issue that will certainly define a bunch of elections in 2022. And if the Democrats propose new taxes, then they really have to focus those new taxes on the uber-wealthy Americans, those who are millionaires and billionaires. But if they focus on uh, the middle class, the upper middle class, uh, even the upper middle class, and as well as the working class for taxes, that's not going to help them. And that also relates to corporate taxes, because corporate taxes, as much as Democrats want to say that they don't affect everyday Americans, Ultimately, they do because corporations just pass that tax down to the salaries of their employees, to, the, uh, to their bonuses, um, in order to kind of make the same amount of money for their executives. So for taxes, it's an issue that Americans don't really want uh, <clears throat> on their dinner plate or, I guess, on their uh, minds right now. Um, so for the Democrats, if they want to, like, for in relation to taxes, they really should only be taxing the wealthy. Another thing to talk about is uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure, a lot of Americans want infrastructure to get done. They are questioning why the Democrats have not finished or, I guess, passed the infrastructure bill, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, through Congress and uh, signed by Joe Biden. Now, a lot of that is because of stall. Uh, of Stalin from the progressive Democrats, but uh, but nonetheless, it's still a, a stall is a stall, and no matter who does it, it's not helpful or beneficial 
for uh, the Democrats who are looking to say that we've done something in Joe Biden's presidency besides the American Rescue Plan. Because the American Rescue Plan, it was it was a monumental bill, but a lot of Americans are already past that. Bills only go so far and, and only go so long until Americans start to forget about them. So for, for the Democrats, if they truly want to... Um, if they want, if they truly want to say that they've done something, uh, they've done something traditional successfully, then they better pass the infrastructure bill. Uh, another thing uh, that a lot of individuals uh, want is uh, a lot of uh, things that individuals want is also paid leave, which is why uh, Nancy Pelosi put paid leave back into the budget plan, into the $1.75 uh, $1 trillion budget plan. Uh, now, the problem with this is that Joe Manchin is not in favor of paid leave, of four weeks of paid leave. Paid leave is very popular in America, uh, especially because uh, the United States is only one of six countries to not provide paid leave to parents at all. Uh, but for a lot of Americans, they want at least four weeks of paid leave. Uh, you could even say that a majority of Americans even want more than that. Uh, so for the Democrats, they propose that, but Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin's against that, which is why uh, this is something that will be hard to implement. But if the Democrats can implement that, then that's another step to saying that they've done something beneficial uh, to the American society. Now, there are three issues that we uh, co uh, commonly have mentioned in the past few videos. Um, so, the first one includes the global supply chain. This is a very hard issue to solve, but for the global supply chain, it's causing a lot of economic disturbance in the United States. It's causing a lot of lost, uh, lost revenue because shipments are not being delivered in time. So what the demo, uh, so uh, yeah, what the Democrats could do is that they can start investing in manufacturing hubs in the United States, uh, in research and development for more advanced parts like chips. Chip manufacturing is something that. The uh, that the United States could certainly do very well, uh, but the Democrats, um, j but for those kinds of things, it just takes time to assemble those manufacturing lines and to hire workers um, who know how to kind of process chips. Other things include uh, trying to um, trying to fund manufacturing lines, not just in China, but in other nations. That uh, And the thing with that is... Uh, you can kind of diversify the amount of areas where you get your products from. You can diversify uh, where your product can be manufactured, and that makes delays uh, the chances of delays a lot less likely to happen. Now, this is something that really can only be done by corporations. So for the Democrats, if they want to do that, they have to incentivize corporations to do so, and that may mean a tax break, which isn't really the best thing that and which isn't the thing that most people want uh, the Democrats to do right now. So for the global supply chain, there's not much the Democrats can do, but they can at least try and they can at least show that they're trying to solve this issue. Um, because that's half of the equation. That's half of the political equation. Since if you can show that you're doing something and that is producing some kind of result, even if it's minimal result, then you can spin that uh, it, you can spin that so that you can you can frame it so that a small I guess a small re a resolution could actually be a very big resolution, um, and that's something that's been commonly done in elections before, and that's something that the Democrats can do. Uh, the other thing that Democrats could do is kind of resolve the question of inflation. Inflation is one of the biggest issues that we are seeing among the American public. And for most Americans, in inflation is top on their mind because uh, money is becoming less valuable every month in the United States, or at least the money that p people currently have. And uh, the inflation rate is going at a drastically high rate. So if the Democrats want to solve this issue, they have to first of all turn to the Fed and tell them to uh, dictate monetary policies that limit inflation. Uh, the other thing that the Democrats could do is start raising the ta raising taxes. But again, that's not popular with the most with most Americans because they don't want their taxes to be raised. Um, <clears throat> So it's a dichotomy that's occurring here, and it's one that the Democrats cannot easily solve. 
Uh, and that's a theme that we're starting to see now, which is that the Democrats are finding issues that a lot of Americans are facing, but are unable to solve them, unable to fully resolve those kinds of issues without either Republican support in the Senate or um, things that they cannot solve because they are out of their, it is out of their control. And that, as we said before, poses a huge threat to the Democratic Party in 2022 because they need to show that they are listening to, to Americans. They need to show that they're governing for the people, the purpose of American, uh, the uh, the purpose uh, the purpose of American government is to have, is to give the people a voice. It's for the people, um, and is it is we the people. So uh, if the if, if Americans want the global supply chain to be soft, if they want inflation to go down, then. For the Democrats, they need to show that they are at least attempting to solve those issues, and they need to show at least that some minimal resolution uh, is occurring with their actions. So those are just some of the things that Americans want Democrats to do. Uh, but for the progressives, the main reason why I bring these issues up is that for the progressive Democrats, they're really focusing on issues that are popular with Americans, but things that are not necessary for Americans right now, things that don't uh, that Americans don't necessarily care at this moment. Like climate change, for example, it's a, a very big threat in the uh, in, in the United States and around the world. But unfortunately, most Americans just don't care about that right now because they care about the economy. As uh, as the saying goes, it's the economy, stupid. Um, it's it's always at this point it is going to be about the economy. The twenty twenty two election will be about that, uh, especially with rise in inflation and. That's something that Democrats will have to note in their future policies and their budget plan, because if they want something that is popular among every single American and something that boosts Biden's approval rating, then they need something that helps uh, that, that solves the issues that are in the very short term being faced by the American society, because these very short term issues will start to stretch out into the longer term. The global, the global supply chain issue will not be solved in the next few weeks. Inflation will not be solved in the next few weeks. These uh, things take at least, uh, at least for the global supply chain, it will take at least a year to solve it. For inflation, it will take at least uh, several months in order to solve uh, this issue. And for the general economy, it will take one to two years to um, to allow the economy to go back to where it was in 2019. So those are all things that really um, harm the Democratic Party. But once again, as we constantly say, the Democrats have to at least try. They have to at least try to show um, that they're doing something beneficial for the Americans That in, in terms of those three core issues. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned and I'll see you in the next one.